Good evening. Welcome to SciArc and uh, this evening's edition of Butterfly. My name is Eric Boatwright. Uh, I'm one of the members of the SciArc uh, Lecture Series Committee for this fall. Um, before we begin, I'd just like to thank a few people. Um, I'd like to thank Margie Reeve for uh, assisting us in getting uh, all of our guest speakers here. Uh, she's kind of been able to help out behind the scenes doing things that, um, well, I'll admit I had no interest in doing at all. You know, organizing plane tickets and room reservations and car rentals and all the sort of ugly logistical things that um, I really don't care to deal with at all. Um, um, I'd like to thank also Michael Speaks. I'll get sort of back to why I want to thank him um, in a little bit. Um, Chris Seals and um, Casey McSweeney and Jamie Meyer. Uh, they're, um, and also, I'm sorry I don't know their names, but the, the, uh, the maintenance staff that helps set up all the chairs and, and get the room ready for uh, evenings like this. Um, I'd also like to thank... Um, Hold on. It's, it's, I'm trying to keep this brief, but there's a lot of people that I just really feel like should be acknowledged because they usually never are. But um, finally, I'd just like to thank uh, Mimi's, um, Mimi Zeigler. She was the editor of um, Loud Paper. She, uh, she sort of, I guess, for me, the, the main reason why, um, why, why we're able to uh, have IR here tonight, um, I this is where I picked up, and I just distinctly remember opening up uh, Loud Paper, uh, I don't know, it was maybe a year ago now, and reading an interview with the IRLE. Um, this is before we even started thinking about, uh, you know, lecture series or who we might invite, and, you know, this was, I thought, wow, this is great. I mean, she does all kinds of really cool things, and, you know, who knows what we're going to, you know, this could, this could be something really great. This is going somewhere, just, you know, trust me. Um, over the course of the past year or so, um, you know, this idea of the, the butterfly has sort of, it just sort of keeps weaving in and out. And uh, from my standpoint, you know, it just started with this little thing, this, this uh, independent architectural magazine that had this interview and slowly it built and we invited Ayara, she said she would come and, um, you know, we were all really excited. And then we found out Oh wow, she has this series of uh, uh, CDs that she's released that uh, combine uh, works of contemporary architecture with um, contemporary composers and electronic musicians, and wow, that's really cool. And then further down the line, we find out that she's actually made um, uh, a series of films that accompany the music, and you know, so now we have film and architecture and music, and it's just like, oh man, this is a dream come true. And so this is sort of, you know, getting at this idea of butterfly, it's kind of, we were talking about it earlier, it's kind of like this snowball effect, this sort of, um, I like to call it a happy conspiracy, you know, where things just sort of, they come together in ways that you don't expect and, and they become really wonderful things. Um, the other thing that I wanted to thank Michael for was uh, just talking about butterfly. Uh, we were talking about sort of how we would theme this uh, lecture series. We just, you know, we had all kinds of different ideas and um, a whole bunch of different lecturers that were, you know, from one from over here, and this, this thinker, and this filmmaker, and this uh, architect, and you know, like, oh, how, how in the world are we going to kind of come up with a way of encapsulating what happens? And, and Michael says, well, I don't care if you call it butterfly or whatever, and, um, you know, as soon as he said that, there's sort of this moment in the room where it's like, hmm, what about that? And we spent some time and, you know, like, that just seemed too easy and it just seemed too strange and we talked and talked and to the point of exhaustion. <laughs> and, um, and then finally we wound up with Butterfly. So, obviously, I'm um, getting some cues here that I should shut up. But I'm just so excited I have to, like, kind of share all these ideas because I think they're really an integral and vital part of what's going on here. So, without further ado, please help me welcome the RLE. Um, I'm a very non-theoretical person, but I'm very hands-on. People say I'm very workaholic, and it is true that things do happen um, in a whimsical way. Um, 
I'm going to start showing um, an excerpt of the film we did, Synthetic Pleasures. Uh, I was fascinated with the indoor beach they created in Japan, and I was going to do a, a short film on controlled environments. And things, it, it, I just got so more and more interested and in, in involved, and, and all of a sudden it became my first feature film, feature length film. Um, at that time, I didn't realize architecture was such a passion, and things do happen in a very non-predictable way. Um, as he was saying, you know, with this film, Synthetic Pleasures, we had electronic music soundtrack, and then uh, I was releasing the, the soundtrack and had difficulties convincing uh, record labels to, to put out this kind of interesting uh, experimental music, so I decided to launch a record label. And uh, we launched the record label, and when we made a film on electronic music called Modulations, and when I was touring with Modulations, I would take my director of photography with me, and we would shoot uh, architectural forms. Uh, so simultaneously to that, we uh, gather all this footage of contemporary architecture all over the world. And uh, just a few months ago, in New York, Creative Time, a non-for-profit organization invited us to to do this installation with music, film, and architecture. And then it was my opportunity to go to the editing room and take all this material and do something with it. And, uh, and then, all of a sudden, the university here invited us to come and present some of these ideas. So all I'm trying to say is that it is a very snowball effect. And uh, a lot of things in life, it's just so unpredictable. And you should always throw yourself into situations and, and just try. Our motto, our philosophy with the company is to reinvent culture. And um, all our projects are very technological oriented. And what I try to do is celebrate um, how technology can enhance creativity. So that's it. Um, I would like to show a little bit of the film, and then we can start a discussion. No, I think the thing that sets human beings apart from other creatures is a built-in dissatisfaction. There's an itch that we have that can't be scratched.
Our efforts to scratch it have created civilization, which is essentially the practice of trying to adapt the environment to us rather than adapting ourselves to the environment. decided long ago that we were terrified by nature and that we needed to be more powerful so that we weren't threatened by nature so much. The flight to land and the first men on the moon. Technology means power to us. It symbolizes potentially immortality. This is the fantasy that somehow we can transcend our horrible condition of being human through these shiny black boxes. You become a god. You have the power to change reality. You have the power to create reality. When you look on the TV, and is anything you see real? Nobody knows anymore. With the, the, some of the digital imagery, with some of the retouching, some of the 3D animation, what you see, is, it's, it isn't real. And with this technology, it lets me be a god, and it lets me create my reality. controlled environment only because you can control whether there's pollution, you can control what's in the ocean, control what's on the sand, the beach. It's just a cleaner environment. They've had a lot of experience to change things. In a sense, tourism begins as a kind of controlled environment. Middle class people could now travel and see the world. It used to be that going to exotic places required a certain hardiness of spirit, and now it was a more controlled experience, less random, with guides to take you. And now that's been brought home. I mean, you don't have to go to the pyramids anymore. The pyramids can come to you. You know, uh, I've worked so hard all the week, you know, Last Sunday before last was such a birdie day and all. At Epcot Center at Disney World or in Las Vegas, you can see reproductions of all those things and they're they're ever so much nicer than what you can see in, in the real world. You can have a nice sort of dinner in, in a Mexican pyramid and watch the volcano explode at just the right time. And, you know, you're guaranteed of having the experience that you were expecting. Seems to me that now what we have is the capacity to literally create the environment that we want to be in. That is to make available environments that would not be normally available to most people. I mean, it's an extension of something like a, a shopping mall or something like the Metrodome.
we create a microcosmic uh, representation of nature, optimized and sanitized, so that it is precisely as we want it, and it becomes exceedingly available. It's all packaged for me. My world is packaged for me. I just have to consume it. In a sense, what you've done is filter all the hazards out of the natural experience and just distill those parts of the experience which are pleasant, uh, positive, danger-free. I guess the next step is literally to sit in a, in a booth and not be on skis at all, not wear a pocket. The virtual reality issue is tremendously uh, seductive, fascinating. You know, if you can create not only an indoor environment that replicates this, but you have a kind of virtual reality where you sit yourself down in a chair and uh, somehow or other you're strapped in and uh, you enjoy the experience of skiing without ever skiing. You never master the techniques, you just gain the experience. trying to figure out ways to reduce the sense of separation that having bodies gives us. If we start to inhabit an environment where we can't take our bodies, I think the difference between mind starts to go away, and I, you know, personally view that as being a positive development. Virtual reality is defined to mean that thing that you could create that would become immersive through the use of computers, iPhones, and some kind of uh, physical mapping system like a data glove or bodysuit. I always tell people if they want to understand what virtual reality is, they should take a look at Las Vegas. Las Vegas is a real clear case of the map having gotten so substantial that people can walk around in it and feel like they are in full, immersive, three-dimensional reality, even though the whole thing is created. We're used in the mummification process of the king. Underneath the middle bed of... Uh... My name is Charlotte Richards, here at the Little White Wedding Chapel in Las Vegas, Nevada. I've been 
performing weddings for the last 35 years. And as I see technology advancing, I decided a drive-up wedding window would be a, a very up-to-date way of getting married. My next step is uh, by television, where I will be sitting at a television monitor and the couple will be monitored. And uh, I think television's great, don't you? <laughs> There's this odd blurring between the reality of marriage and the simulation of Elvis impersonators that sort of blends in some strange way and creates some sort of hyper-real environment. a natural thing well not much about our society is natural anymore <laughs> town square has been replaced by the mall and the friendly neighborhood coffee shop has been replaced by the fast food outlet. A lot of things have contributed to the kind of rootless, alienated society we live in. We are in an era in which the natural world is threatened by uh, human activity. So we can't drink from our rivers. The air is polluted. The food chain is suffering. At the same time, we can retreat into a synthetic world in which we have artificial trees and artificial skies and artificial animals. I think the day might come when some of those worst science fiction fantasies come true. Uh, the electricity goes off and you discover you're not living in paradise, you're living in hell. ここには日常を超えた体験があります。ここにはパラダイスがあります。フェニックスリゾート市街や王シャンドーム、宮崎に誕生。I'd like to be able to get the sun on a beach and all that, but not have any of the pollution and any of the bad things that are on there. Not have to worry about the sharks or the jellyfish or anything like that. I think there's been a long-standing dream of rediscovering paradise. So that if we have urban space, which has sort of separated us from nature, then our dream of technology will be about technology giving us a pristine natural environment again within the city that can incorporate parks and greenery and oxygen.
風7号の接近により宮崎県地方は午後5時ごろに暴風域に入ることが予想されます。It's really a, a kind of、uh, manifestation of our capacity to control the world and to control nature. Outside, we don't have that control. Nature still shows that it can do us in at any moment. Inside this encapsulated reality, we are in control. I guess there are interesting questions that arise as a result of,、uh, of this. I've always thought, in some ways, that、um, the ecological problems, problems of ecology, are essentially problems of transformation. That is, we might, in the end,、uh, transform the world in such a way that we won't be able to adapt to it. That is, we literally won't be able to live in the world that we create. IMAX films and computer databases, and the unbelievable ability we have to store information. In a sense, we can set about cataloging nature. And my dark nightmare of that is that once we've cataloged it, we won't need nature anymore, because after all, we can always summon up an image of these great extinct species so that, you know, I will never miss them when they're gone. I won't even know about it. Ability to have complete control over the structure of matter、uh, will we, in effect, become omnipotent? It sounds like this is true because if we can build anything that we want to build, then what is going to stop us from doing just absolutely anything at all? The technology doesn't mean any one thing, and that it's not giving us a flawless universe. But it's allowing people to create what it is they want to create. Some people may want to live in a space station in which everything is controlled down to the last molecule. There'd be no bugs or rats, mice, anything. There'd be nothing up there that you didn't want.、And、not everyone is、uh, going to want to do that. However, I, I certainly wouldn't. I tend to like planet Earth with all of its imperfections. Well, boys, that's it. Hope this trip is as easy as your last one. Thanks. It should be. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Fire pilot jets. There's a whole universe out there, Steve. Totally unknown, beyond anyone's comprehension. Over. 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 Commander, we've got bogey from Alpha Sector.
coming in fast. Commander, we're detecting an energy surge. They're charging weapons. Ensign, notify the Stellar Command if we're under attack. Get Gamma Squadron off the deck pronto. on Earth has always been very boring to me. That's why I started going to the clubs, because it gives me a chance to be whatever I want. And that's why I hope in the near future there will be like colonies on other planets where hopefully there will be other people like me, where everyone is accepted no matter what they are. new enlightenment, a new humanism, or a transhumanism as I prefer to call it, a humanism which looks beyond current human abilities and limits and applies reason and science and objective truth and research to improving humans' possibilities. Seven, six, five. I personally think we're going to have to wait until we have cheap space transportation so we can get off the planet and into space where there's plenty of room and then we can start whole new societies. Not having the physical bands of the Earth and, and the excuse of limited space, people will want to try all kinds of different social experiments. In the absence of geography, since we've explored the world, now there's a construction of new geographies through the computer, or through simulation, or through digitalization, or through replacement of the body. to be my um, short film and uh, uh, I showed the first part of the film which is about the environment but uh, isn't it true that technology now gives us the fantasy of control and not only you can control the environment but the body the mind and so forth so um, as he was saying the whole butterfly effect and the whole snowball effect um, that's how I stumbled into research and made this my from my short film into my first full-length film. Um, I encourage you, if you'd like to see the rest, you know, it's, it's now on video. This is actually a film I did in 96. And uh, as you see, there's a lot of music and back to the snowball effect. That's how I started the, the record label. Um, a lot of times, uh, it's a lot of work and it's actually work that doesn't take you anywhere when you're just trying to convince people to be uh, experimental. So my theory is that it's less work if you just do it yourself, you know. <laughs> so we make our movies, we have our record label, and uh, we now even do some publishing because we got tired of trying to convince publishing houses to publish our books. <laughs> and, um, and that's just how it goes. Um, architecture has been uh, something uh, at first, I didn't realize that this, this whole idea was that the, the, the line of all the projects is, is technology and how we have the fantasy of control because as we say here in the film, um, we unlike other animals, when it's winter, we don't migrate, we just turn our heater on. And uh, the Japanese, they just do things in a more exponential way. Um, they just make it 10 times bigger. Uh, we had the very first crew allowed to shoot in this indoor beach and indoor ski resorts in Japan. And um, it just fascinates me. I mean, 
the film, a lot of times people, people interpret the way they want to interpret. For me, it's actually kind of a sad and creepy, but, you know, but it tells me a lot about the audience because at the end of the screen, people say, oh, this is so cool. I want to go to the indoor beach and <laughs> surf the 10 foot waves. And then right after that one, another person comes and says, wow, this was really depressing. <laughs> And uh, I think technology has this like double-edged sword, and one wonders if we are prepared um, philosophically to handle so much power. And that has been the subject of all my uh, investigation: how much we can control, and how much should we control? Because if we can, we will. And where should we stop? Um, I'd like to just open for some comments and questions related to these controlled environments. Any questions? Uh huh. Yeah, the, the most bizarre thing about the indoor beach is, is that it's right next to the Rio beach. And when we got there, there was a typhoon going on. And we were like, oh my god, we can't land with the crew. We can't shoot. And uh, it's just unbelievable. We got to a situation now that we really want to delete all the impurities of life. And as we ask here in the film, isn't that what is the beauty of life, that is, there is imperfection? And that can also be extended to music and other art forms. I think a lot of times we, we try to have this very uh, perfect world. And uh, that's really what took me to electronic music as well, because people incorporate the glitches and impurities of sound. And you know, as I said, the whole philosophy of our company is to expand boundaries and really uh, get all these uh, concepts that are up for grabs and really reinvent them in the sense that uh, uh, when we were editing the, the modulations film, the next one I did, I did the same. I mimicked the, the musicians. Because I think what's beautiful about nature is that it's imperfect. Uh, down the road in the film, we even say, you know, if orgasm was perpetual, it wouldn't be interesting. And, and that's something people don't realize. Um, the indoor beach, in a way, can be seducing because it's big, it's perfect, it's, 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 it's surreal. But people go indoor fishing. That, for me, is like the most bizarre activity because it's like, a, you know, you put the fish there <laughs> and that's your fishing. So nature, for me, still, still um, has much more power than all this technological. And I think what I try to do with this is to, you know, unrelenting way show that this is technology technology can even be a little pathetic so um, I don't know how you interpret but uh, the film for me is it's a way of criticizing technology more than than supporting it yeah. more comments Yeah, that's basically what I'm saying. I, I have the feeling we have uh, too much control. I mean, kids nowadays, they have so much technology, and are we prepared for that? I think uh, 
more than anything, what it brings is the ethical and philosophical questions. How much should we control with all this technology? So, you know. I would say sideways and always use what is created for some evil purposes and uh, change, twist things around and use it to enhance creativity, use it to, you know, it's almost like you have to misuse technology in order to make good use of it. Because it, it was not, uh, obviously we all know it was not uh, creative to enhance creativity, but for military purposes. And, you know, the cat is out of the bag and, and it's really what we do with it. A lot of times we talk about alienation, and my whole purpose is to, you know, empower kids, you know, empower artists. You know, nowadays we have cheap DV cameras. You can express yourself. Film is a very cumbersome activity, but uh, you know, you have no excuse. You should not say, "Oh, I can't express myself in the film format because it's it's too expensive." You can take your mini DV and just do it. You know, so the whole purpose is. Uh, you know, you misuse. It's just like the synthesizers, you know, when it, they were first created, people were trying to mimic uh, acoustic instruments, and uh, that was not the point. That was, the point was to, to really use the synthesizer, misuse the synthesizer and explore for what they could really do, create synthetic sounds, you know? So it, it's really up to us how we can twist things around and use it for good purposes. Yeah? Right. Yeah. And thank you for putting it in. <laughs> what else? I wanted to say now, going back a little bit to the um, architecture topic, uh, again, um, we are now doing a CD series. Um, we've been very inspired in mixing media and um, was started as a record label is now expanding, and uh, we've been uh, able to to uh, convince a lot of uh, very prestigious contemporary architects to send us slides, and uh, we are we were just talking before this that uh, we will be bringing a, a, a multimedia installation to the to the school. Uh, as I say, I'm very like hands on. I can never stop working, and the idea now is to. Uh, take the CD because um, we released three volumes so far. One is uh, inspired on Toyo Ito's Tower of Winds, again a very technological building. During the day is just a metal cylinder in Yokohama, but he has a technological ways of triggering uh, lights through the wind and the, and, the, and the weather. So in the evening it's a total different building. It looks extremely different because it's triggered through these technological devices. And um, for that, we had Taylor Dupree did the music. We tried to mix uh, nationality, so we have uh, a Greek musician interpreting a Japanese building, Savas and Taylor interpreting Toyota's Tower Winds. And the volume two was very interesting. Uh, we invited Nicholas Grimshaw to participate uh, in this project with uh, uh, Tetsu Inoue. And he basically took the scans and all the wireframes and all the drawings of the Waterloo Terminal, where you take the train to go from London to Paris. And it's almost like making music with Photoshop, because he used all the scans and the drawings and made the computer generate all the sounds from, from the drawings. And he would edit, painstakingly edit all the different um, glitches and blips. and. Um, and that's again, it's a very interesting concept in the sense that you're making music with Photoshop. Um, and the third volume, David Toop, was fascinated with the Museum of Fruit. Again, a very technological building right next to the Mount Fuji. And uh, since I'm from Brazil, I'm now trying to expand and, and always include my country in my projects. And the next one is Oscar Niemeyer. And he will be writing the liner notes 
and the, the city will be called Brasilia. So this is the beginning of the, my architecture um, fascination. And um, from that, we decided to incorporate the musicians in a live setting. So what we are going to try to bring here in a few months, it's uh, the musicians who do soundscapes interpreting these, these buildings. And we'll do a presentation of 300 slides of furniture design and contemporary architecture. And um, it's, it's been, uh, it's been uh, interesting because throughout the whole process is about convincing uh, institutes that sometimes are even uh, very formal and, and, and very conservative. So I think we broke the ice. We were able to convince the Museum of Modern Art and we brought the soundscape to open the, uh, the exhibition in private house. And uh, now that we have all this, this material, it will become a traveling installation. So uh, we'll be back here in, in a few months with that. Um, I would like to show some of these um, films we made when we were traveling with modulations. And th these are architectural films. And then we can go back to the subject again.
Uh, I guess, could you turn off the lights for a minute, please? <laughs> well, maybe it's the end of the party. <laughs> Attachment to uh, architecture is really more from the poetry point of view. Um, as I say, you know, it's not the theory, but the aesthetics and how we can mix media. Um, I was very influenced by Varese when he did the, the with for music for 400 speakers with Le Corbusier's building, the pavilion for Philips. And you know, later on, Brian Eno was experimenting with music for airports, and I just wanted to continue this this great idea of. Uh, um, having musicians collaborate with architects, and that was the what came to my mind. Um, and, and then extending from that, we made movies, and, uh, and next year and we'll be producing a book since we've been interacting with all these wonderful uh, contemporary architects. And again, is is technology the uh, what is really behind all, all these different projects um, and what I've been studying and doing a lot of research about is it's, it's pretty much the, the high-tech architects and what they're doing to, to use this technology, not to just create corporate buildings, but you know, architecture as, as, as an expression of art. Uh, what is wonderful about this school is that people have the freedom to be experimental and you know, a lot of times it's, it's, it's hard in the real world because it's about the engineering, it's about the, the, the corporate world, and I would like to, to continue um, uh, supporting the, this kind of project. And, you know, because I, I do feel we don't need to, to surrender to the, to, the, to the Hollywood system or to the corporate world. Um, our projects, they're, they're very, always very small, and most of the, um, the commercialization we even just do through the online shop that we put on the internet, on, on our website. And um, it's, you know, this is the beauty of this school, and that's why I wanted to come here so badly. Um, I will be talking to the, to the organizers behind the scenes because um, Hopefully, since we are so project-oriented and we never stop, uh, the other thing that occurs to me is that it would be a wonderful opportunity. We are now in New York creating this Caipirinha headquarters for more artists and, and from different media to come and create. And we, we, are, we were thinking this afternoon that it would be wonderful if we could do a contest because we will be creating this three-level uh, project, three floors, and uh, I'd like to to invite the, the students here to, to participate with ideas because maybe, you know, sometimes we have to give evidence that it doesn't need to stay in the virtual world. Some, some people can be out there and try to apply your uh, surreal, sometimes experimental ideas into the physical world. And that's the big, big challenge, I think, of all artists because so much is, is in your head. And, and I think for me, what validates is when you make it tangible, you know, even Federico Fellini says, everybody has ideas, you know, but the difference is who can actually put these ideas on the screen. And I think architecture is so much about that. When we were shooting these this little projects, these films all over the world, 
and I was doing research, most of the incredible projects, they, they never really uh, took place in the real world. And there is something to be said about that. And I think we should do everything in our power to, to, to make this the most intellectually challenging projects to, to really happen in the physical world. So um, we'll be talking about this contest later. Um, and uh, any questions, any comments about? Yeah? Yeah, I think the collaboration uh, will evolve just like, you know, uh, the first two projects, the first two CDs, I would choose the buildings and then I would invite the musicians. The third time, the musician chose the architect in the building and uh, I think we will be uh, doing this, this kind of reverse, you know, as you said, have the music made first and then the architecture and uh, and then even sometimes write music for virtual buildings. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Anything else? Excuse me? Yeah, I mean, that's the Luigi Russolo with the Futurist in 1913 wrote about breaking the boundaries of music making so much of our concepts is about melody and what is interesting about electronic musicians is that they incorporate sounds. We don't talk about music, we talk about sounds. And uh, with music concrete in the 40s and 50s, uh, they would record sounds from nature and manipulate and at that time they didn't have the technology so they would have to splice and, and and edit little bits of, of magnetic tape. And for me, that's what is very challenging and thought provoking that music does not need to stay within the boundary of melody. And so to answer your question, what is the difference between music and sound effects? No, no, no difference. <laughs> The, the, the actual buildings of the, of the cities, they were just uh, the starting point. And as you notice, uh, Nicholas Grimshaw's Waterloo Terminal was just the starting point. And um, again, I think it's, it's really about the relationship, technology, and, and humans. And the, the very last one you see, I have this, this long shot of this only person that you see in the whole film, because it's all about inanimate buildings. And um, the water, the the terminal happiness is, is pretty much an exploration of transportation and moving from one one place to the other. And we 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 try to shoot the the uh, in London the Docklands. We shot the the in Japan the bullet train. We shot the, the train stations in New York and uh, and then the Waterloo Terminal. And that was. Uh, I decided to call it Terminal Happiness. Uh, taro, taros, uh, taro Winds, uh, we call it Towers of Wind because it was a, it's an homage to all the skyscrapers that we shot all over the world. And um, the Museum of Fruit, it's for me ironic that it's right next to the, the Mount Fuji, and so you always have this, this contrast of high technology and nature. So when I did the film, I decided to call it Enclosed Nature and, and explore the, the two extremes of controlled environments and free nature. 
Um, I just wanted to show the films because then it, it gives you an idea what I'm talking about, the music, you know. I think it's always very important to, to give physical evidence. Um, you know, a lot of times for me it's, it's easy to show my creations than I actually articulate about them. Um, all right, any more questions? I think we have a party here outside, right? <laughs> Thank you.